Today, we're taking a look at the differences between sharpening your images in Lightroom versus Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's thing, <laughs> in today's episode, we are answering the age old question. Is it better to sharpen in Lightroom or in Photoshop? So we're gonna go over a couple different sharpening tools in Lightroom and in Photoshop and see which results win the test. We got a great one for you. We're starting off, let's get into Lightroom. So here's our sample image for today. Now you can actually download this on flurn.com and follow along using the link right down below. So first thing we're gonna do is pop into our develop module. That's how we sharpen in Lightroom. And basically there are two ways you can sharpen in Lightroom. The first way is to go to right down to your detail panel and just crank up sharpening. So just bring up sharpening. Now to see it really well, we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. So I'm gonna do a three to one zoom and we're gonna get nice and close to our subject. So really, really nice. You do have a little preview window here and you can click on this little thing to kind of like navigate around your uh, navigate around your image. I just prefer to zoom in like a three to one. You can click on this little drop down box to get to a higher level of zoom if you need it. So here we have a few different options. We can just increase the amount of sharpening. Now radius will be like for larger details, you'll use a larger radius. Smaller details, you'll use a smaller radius. We have the amount of detail, which just basically kind of enhances the amount of sharpening on a per pixel basis. And then masking is gonna try to do its best job to not affect like smoother areas like skin and try to affect uh, like areas with more contrast like eyes and things like that. Okay, so in general, here we can see that it, it does work okay. The only thing that, all right, well, there's two things that I don't love about this. One, it sharpens your entire image the same, right? Like I just have one slider for my whole image and it's just gonna sharpen everything, which is not my preferred way of sharpening. I actually like to sharpen individual details to draw more attention to those details. So we can't do that with this method in Lightroom. We just basically have a slider, so it's like, your whole image, yes or no. Um, the other thing that I notice is a lot of artifacts. Just a lot of this just, it, it looks very, uh, usually something I stay away from in Lightroom. But I do want to go ahead and just crank this up and export this out. So I went ahead and exported that out. Let's take a look at our other method of sharpening here in Lightroom and then we can kind of compare all of them together in Photoshop in a bit. So. We're just gonna bring this right back down to zero. In fact, here I'm in my history, I'm just gonna go back to import. So our second method of sharpening actually does allow us to sharpen individual areas in Lightroom. It's really great. Uh, we're gonna be using the brush tool. So let's go ahead and here to our brush adjustment, adjustment brush, and click, you can use your open and close brackets to make your brush larger and smaller. Now by default, you may see that your exposure might be bumped up. In my case, it's two plus one. So I'm gonna paint over my subject's eyes this is kind of like my main go-to when I'm sharpening my subject. You can move around your image, by the way, using this thumbnail on the top left. So I'm, I'm gonna just paint right over uh, my subject's eyes. We've got three subjects in here, so a total of six eyes. <laughs> High school math champion, there we go. Now, in this case, we don't need to bring our exposure up. That's not our goal here. So let's just click where it says exposure. I'm gonna hit zero right there. But we do have an option for sharpness. Now, you'll notice with this sharpness slider, unfortunately, we don't have all the sharpness controls that we do with the global sharpening. I don't have masking, I don't have radius, and I don't have detail. Basically, I just have sharpness. So let's go ahead and bring that up and see how that looks. And I gotta hand it to the tool. It is nice that we can sharpen in certain areas. Um, by the way, you can add or subtract with your brush tool at any time super easily. All you have to do is right here where it says brush, uh, just go to the erase. So I can just click on erase. There we go. And I can erase it away from areas of skin where I don't want this amount of sharpening to be. Um, so I would actually like maybe even a little bit more sharpening than this, but once you crank it up to 100, you know, there's not, it's 100% already. So we are a little bit limited there as well. And basically those are the two methods that we use to sharpen in Lightroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this out and then we're gonna take a look at a couple of sharpening methods in Photoshop and compare them. 
So here we are in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you the method that I prefer to sharpen. We're actually gonna duplicate the background layers. So let's hit Control or Command J. Now, if you already have a bunch of layers, you can actually just create a new layer and go to Image and down to Apply Image. There we go, and just choose Merge and Blending will be normal. Basically, sharpening should be done at the very end. That's my general uh, advice. So if you had a bunch of layers, then use the image apply image method, and that would put a copy of everything you see on a new layer. Uh, but in this case, uh, I just made a duplicate of the background layer because that's all I have. Now, we actually do have sharpen actions available as a part of Florin Pro, and we're going to link to that right down below. Basically, just does all this for you, but I do want to show you how to do it manually as well. So now that we have a duplicate of our background layer, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna desaturate that, okay? So we're gonna go to image adjustments and we're gonna go to desaturate. The reason here is I don't want this to affect color, just sharpness. Okay, now we're gonna right click and I'm gonna convert this to a smart object. Fantastic. And then with this as a smart object, we're gonna change it from normal down to overlay. So. Doesn't look right just yet. You can see turning this off and on, it's not doing us any favors. We need to apply a high pass filter and this is what's actually gonna do the sharpening. Now, keep in mind, there are a lot of different ways to sharpen in Photoshop. I know this is a little bit complex, but in my opinion, it's one of the best ways to sharpen. So now what we're gonna do is go to filter, we're gonna go down to other and over to high pass. And basically this just removes, uh, if I zoom out, you can kind of see what it looks like here. So let's just go to a person's face. It removes detail in like smooth areas and just focuses on uh, contrast between highlight and shadow. Now you can adjust your radius here and that basically just adjusts the sharpening. You don't want to go too high or you're going to get kind of like an odd result like this, but something right about here looks pretty good. Now, the reason I like this method is that I can use a layer mask with this. So just look, click on your layer mask icon. I'm going to invert my layer mask by hitting Control or Command I. And then I'm just going to use a standard brush tool to paint it in. So basically, I just use the brush tool. And now I can just paint in exactly where I want this sharpening. And as you can see, you have got a lot of control over exactly where this is and is not visible. Okay. I'm in here with the brush and I'm painting over the pupil. We're gonna do the eyelids. There we go. Now, of course, you can sharpen an image as a whole with this technique as well. You just keep the layer mask white, but I think it really shines uh, as, a, as a technique when you just sharpen eyes and other features where you really wanna draw attention to your subjects. This keeps your subject's skin from being sharpened because you really don't wanna sharpen skin for the most part. Um, lips are also okay, by the way. So sharpening lips and sharpening eyes, that's generally where I will sharpen photos. There we go. And details like this, like metallic objects look really good when they're sharpened as well. So here we go. Now, in my opinion, this is a very natural looking sharpen. Let's just turn this off and back on. The reason I like this technique is that I can change the level of sharpening at any time. All I have to do is double click here on the high pass filter and everything is set up. So now all I have to do is change my radius. Okay, so a lower radius will be less sharpening and a higher radius will be more sharpening. Okay, you don't wanna go too high. Again, you're gonna get kind of unnatural results, but you basically wanna go as high as you possibly can until it starts to look unnatural. In this case, around nine pixels looks pretty good. If you're following along, you could just enter in nine. There we go, and we can see our eyes are sharpened. So. I do wanna show you one more method of sharpening. It is not as versatile as this, but it's way easier. There's actually a sharpen brush in Photoshop. So if you go right over here under your eraser tool, there's a sharpen tool, okay? You can click on sample all layers. So you can do this on a new layer, okay? Let's go ahead and bring our strength up and I'm gonna just make our size a little bit smaller. And this is super easy. Literally, you just paint over the area you wanna sharpen, okay? It does work well. The only caveats to this are, um, it's a little bit harder to control. And if I wanna like lower the amount of sharpening after I've already done it, basically I just have to do it again, okay? And if you paint over an area too much, like we'll do the hair, if I keep painting over and over and over again, you're gonna see it's gonna to start to look very unnatural and just all around not what you want most likely. But if you're just looking for a quick solution, uh, it can do, actually do a really nice job. So there's a before and after with this, you can see it's, I over sharpen the eyes a little bit. You can see we're starting to lose some detail. 
And again, the only drawback to this technique is that I don't have a slider here to make it more or less sharp now. I've, I've applied it. So basically I would just make this layer invisible or delete it, make a new layer and then try to just do it again. So this is why I prefer this method. I also think it gives a more natural result because we desaturated it first. It's not actually changing any of the coloring in my image. A lot of the time sharpening can actually oversaturate colors. Like you can see all of my colors are really oversaturated from when I use the sharpen tool here. Okay. But when I use my first method, it's not affecting color at all because I desaturated first. And if you download the Photoshop sharpen actions available from Flurn, they're all built in a way that they don't oversaturate colors as well. So now that I've shown you my favorite technique of sharpening in Photoshop, let's go ahead and do a little compare and contrast here. I'm going to bring in our images from Lightroom and we're going to be able to see how they all stack up. And then you can be the judge with your little gavel. You can say you're the winner. Let's do it. So here we are. I've brought all of my layers together. So at the very top, we have our Lightroom sharpen with the adjustment brush. Then we have our Lightroom global sharpen where we just took the sharpening slider and cranked it up a little bit. Then we have our Photoshop sharpen with our sharpen tool. And then we have the Photoshop sharpen with the high pass filter. So let's go ahead and take a look and then you can decide for yourself uh, who's the winner. So let's go ahead and take a look at our global sharpen in Lightroom first. So let's turn this off and on. And we can see, although it does sharpen the eyes well, we are left sharpening areas that maybe you don't want to sharpen, skin and things like that. And if we zoom in uh, really close, we're getting uh, just a little bit of detail that maybe you don't want in your photograph. Now let's take a look at our sharpen with the adjustment brush in Lightroom. So this is turning off and on. And remember we were at 100% with the adjustment brush in Lightroom. So I was not able to get any more sharpening than this. So now let's take a look at the sharpen tool in Photoshop. And while it does offer you a strong sharpen, uh, if you go too much, you're gonna start to see that you do have a little bit of a saturation shift. These colors are way too saturated um, and we don't have a lot of control. Let's see how it looks in comparison to the Lightroom sharpen with the adjustment brush. So turning that off and on, you can see I was able to get a lot more strength a lot more power out of the sharpen tool in Photoshop than I was out of the adjustment brush in Lightroom. Okay, so here is using the Photoshop sharpen tool and here is Lightroom alone at 100%. All right, for our final, we're gonna take a look at the Photoshop sharpen. In this case, you can see it is only visible exactly where we want it to be visible and we can turn it off and on at any time. We can also double click here on the high pass filter and change the amount of sharpening. And as you can see, it's not going to sharpen details that you don't want. So which one do I prefer? Well, it's probably pretty obvious by now. The adjustment brush is cool. And especially if you just need to go like you're kind of in a hurry and just like need to get your image edited in Lightroom and you don't want to go to Photoshop totally a great option. I think this is a much better technique than just using the overall global sharpen because you're going to get a lot less artifacts and you can control exactly where it goes. The sharpen tool in Photoshop is powerful, but sometimes as you can see, it's kind of too powerful. So you really got to watch your control. And then of course, here is our most involved sharpen. This is using the high pass filter. Uh, in this case, it's actually my favorite technique out of all of these because I do have a lot of control over exactly which areas get sharpened and how much sharpening we get. And as you can see, even if you're zoomed out, you can see it makes quite a big difference in your photo as a whole. Even when you compare it to the sharpen adjustment brush from Lightroom, which in my opinion, I'm not able to make as much of an impact. I'm turning this off and on. And at this level of zoom, I don't see much. Uh, but here in Photoshop, I actually see quite a big change. And after all, most of the time, we're not going to be viewing our images at 100% zoom. Let's see if the Lightroom global, if we can see any artifacts from this level of zoom. And you kind of can looking in the skin down here and things like that, you, you kind of can start to see some artifacts. So um, I think I've got a clear winner here, this with the Photoshop sharpen technique. I also realize it's kind of the most work out of any of these different techniques, but I think the results speak for themselves. So I'd love to know your thoughts. And if you have any other suggestions on how to sharpen your images or things that work for you, please let us know in a comment right down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you want to get more, 
free tutorials on Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. Hit that little subscribe icon. We'll send you one every single week. Thanks so much. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Yeah, I think it was good to, for me to say my clear winner because obviously I have an opinion and trying to say that I don't have an opinion doesn't make any sense because that would be a lie. And I think it's obvious that I like this one the best.